Laura. Um, welcome everyone and uh, for a bit of background uh, for those that don't know, um, so this is uh, an event that's hosted by BitterX, which is a chapter of Bitter. Uh, Bitter is a non-profit making organisation that encourages its members to build relationships uh, for exciting networking, educational and social events. Uh, BitterX is um, dedicated to uh, young professionals specifically um, and we have had a series of webinars that we've been running. Uh, this is our fourth. And um, you know, I'm particularly uh, excited to welcome our, on our conversation today, a couple of familiar faces uh, and, a, uh, and a new face as well. Um, and we're gonna be talking about the, uh, the benefits of volunteering. Um, I'd like to sort of especially uh, thank um, Sinead, who is also um, a board member who volunteers her time uh, for BitterX um, for helping us uh, really put together this piece and, and really champion sort of the volunteering uh, area um, inside BitterX. Um, the ones we've done so far have been fascinating stories about founders and businesses, but you know, I'm very excited for a, a bit of a refreshing change of, uh, change of direction for this one. Uh, and just generally a bit more of a feel-good factor um, for us to uh, uh, for us to explore. Um, as well as Sinead, uh, we've um, we've got Brian uh, as well, who's on the um, Brian Lombard, who's on the line, who's actually a, a volunteer um, for the London Irish Centre. Uh, we also have uh, Paul, who works closely with the uh, Bidirex uh, board. Um, so please do um, have an opportunity to um, to put questions to us for out, and I'll make sure we get them to our panelists. Uh, and also, we're joined today. Uh, on the call um, by Brian Hanley, who's director of the London Irish Centre. Um, so if there are any questions about the organisation and, and the work that uh, the London Irish Centre are doing, uh, please do put them to us uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the webinar and we'll have an opportunity to, uh, to hear from our panellists uh, and Brian uh, at the end of the webinar today. So um, first of all, um, Brian Lombard, um, we've been speaking uh, offline ahead of this, uh, obviously Sinead has sort of put us, uh, put us in touch and, you know, as a, as a current volunteer um, that's benefiting from volunteering and, and, and a young professional, um, it seemed like a, a, a logical conversation for us, for us to be having. Um, could you sort of probably just give a, kick things off of giving a bit of short background of sort of who you are and you, you, your experience and... and yeah. Sure. Thanks, Peter. Um, yeah, first of all, um, hello, everyone. And uh, you know, it's really great to be part of the Bit of X community. Um, it's wonderful to be involved. I really look forward to hopefully in the future, once all things settle down, we can all uh, meet, meet um, once permissible. Um, so yeah, my background briefly. So I'm, I'm from Ireland, originally from Cork. I've been living in London uh, six years uh, professionally. I, I studied in UCC. So my degree originally was in Irish and geography. Um, and then I did a, a master's in European policy. So ta Gwelge Gum, so Master Rode Gwil Sim again then as a group of Shul Gwelge Lowert, uh Bukshit Askulolo. So if anyone here is interested in Irish, um, you know, from, from that perspective it would be great to, to connect with you as well, or if you want to reach out, um, I'm always open to that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I'm uh, professionally my background is I've I, I started working in insurance in London about six years ago. I worked in a commercial team with a company called Ace, who then became Chubb Insurance. Then I moved into a company called Technology Services, where I was the commercial manager responsible for um, all civil and uh, network engineering. Um, and now I'm proud to be part of the London Irish Centre as a volunteer working in the befriending team and the, the community outreach. Okay. And how, how, did you, how did you get introduced to volunteering, Brian? How did that, how, how, how did that come about? Yeah, so I think I think like a lot of people, um, volunteering is something I'd always thought about. It was always something I'd intended to do. Um, I think maybe a lot of people in the the bid X community can can uh, appreciate, you know, coming to London the last six years, um, you know, getting caught up focusing on building your career, um, putting a lot of hours into that, and also I guess you know just the the social scene that comes with moving to a new city with new people here and. Before you know it, um, you know six years have gone by, and you haven't really um, gotten around to the things that are important. You've you've spent all your time um, trying to build that career. So, really, about a year ago, I, I started to think hard about what I wanted to get involved in. 
Um, I think maybe like some people who move to London in a big city, getting caught up in your career, you can lose that sense of connection, lose your sense of community. And I certainly felt like I was lacking that. And I think in the last year or so, I really started to, to, to question those things. And one of the questions I said was, I, was I happy with the career I was in and, and the path that I was taking? And the answer to that question was no. Um, so it was around then I started looking at, and I was aware of the, the London Irish Centre, the work they'd done. Um, but I think those questions about my career and that and sense of connection really prompted me to take action and reach out to Sinead. And I think Sinead, it was around, you know, February, January, February of this year, I sent you an email and I said, look, this is my situation. This is where I'm at. This is the work. This is the experience I have. Hopefully I could contribute something to the London Irish Centre. And I think I put in bold, uh, please, please put me to work. Um, and that's how it, it came about. It, it kind of grew, it, you know, started six, seven years ago and then eventually led to, to finally taking the plunge really and reaching out to Sinead. And can you talk us through, Brian, you know, what, what your experience has been, you know, been like been volunteering so far? Yeah, I mean, really, honestly, really terrific. Um, for me, there's been, there's been so much I've, I've gained from it that I, that I wouldn't have expected really. Um, you know, even the fact that I'm here speaking today to the BIDX community, I was introduced to this forum through Sinead. Um, I wasn't aware of this group and now I've, I've access to all these people that I'm looking forward to, to, to meeting with and to networking with and, and building that, that area of my life out. Um, so that was one, you know, real positive experience that's, that's come out of this. But as well, I think just from a, a general mental health and a mental well-being perspective, I think getting involved with the London Irish Centre um, has, been, has been really positive. I think particularly in the last few months, as everyone's aware, I mean, people are feeling isolated, people aren't feeling connected. Um, but getting involved and working with Sinead and the team in the Irish Centre has really contributed to a, a huge improvement in a sense of fulfilment, um, particularly knowing the, the, the great work that they're doing. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, there's been professional benefits as well. I think, you know, it's, I'm sure Paul will allude to them um, as well, just around getting involved in London Irish Centre, getting those skills on my CV. Um, you know, they've really helped me um, of, of late, you know, transition into a new career, which I wasn't expecting. So honestly, you know, from the first email that I sent to Sinead in, in the last four months, there's been, there's been really positive changes from, from just getting involved in doing this. Okay, great. And Thinking about the people that we're, you know, that, that, that are in our network, that are in the Bitter X community, um, what would you, what would you say to, to, to maybe those that are considering getting in volunteering, whether that's, you know, in person or, or, or maybe touch a little bit about your experience online or, or over the phone? Yeah, I mean, just to, uh, first of all, anyone who's thinking of getting involved, I would say do it. Just, you know, take the, I, I kind of put it on the back burner for too long. Um, six years too long, really. I, I can't imagine where I'd be now if I had started volunteering six years ago. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really helped in, in, in so many regards, you know. Um, and I think, for, especially with working with Sinead and the team, it's, um, it's opened me up to a whole part of society that I never really knew about. So, you know, a few examples of, of some of the work that they're doing and, and the vulnerable that they work with. So my role is working with the, the volunteers team um, as part of the community outreach. And, you know, part of that is calling at-risk individuals who who've, uh, either are receiving or have received in the past the services from the Irish Centre. And my role is to ask pointed questions and to gather information on, you know, their mental well-being, um, their financial situation, um, their physical health, and that's really, you know, opened up some some really difficult and um, heart-rendering conversations with them. But all of the individuals that I've been calling and all the individuals I've been working with over the last two three months have all been unanimous in saying that, you know, the the volunteering centre have been a real lifeline for them, particularly throughout the the latest um, the latest crisis, really. Um, one chap individual, just to, uh, one individual to give you an example, you know, he's someone who's got heart conditions, who's living in temporary accommodation and the centre have been providing meals for him three times a week. Um, they've also been helping with him to get some new accommodation and, and, and funding as well that he's entitled to as part of the government. And he's, 
he said to me, you know, these, these really are my only lifeline. And it's the team, the work that Sinead and Gemma and, and Brian, the work that they're doing, um, has a huge impact on the lives of, of the vulnerable within the society. And for me, I think the biggest takeaway is how vital these volunteering services are to a, a part of society that I really wasn't aware of before. You mentioned, I mean, do you feel this, this change you've had at the moment, you know, we've been speaking offline and, you know, you're going through a period of professional change at the moment. Yep. Do you feel having, going through this experience and working, you know, has, 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 has that helped? Has that impacted in, in, in any way? Yeah, it's been huge. Um, so I guess, as I mentioned earlier, I'd, I'd, I'd really been thinking about a career change for a while. Um, and, you know, towards the end of last year, I had left my role. I knew it wasn't the right path for me. Um, and, you know, I was looking, looking to take on new, new tasks and again, looking for a sense of fulfillment. And that's when I started volunteering with the London Irish Centre. And then that's when I started looking at work that was going to be more meaningful to me. Uh, then coronavirus kicked off. Um, so we spent three months where really nothing was happening. But, you know, example would have been, you know, looking for new roles. I interviewed for a new position two, three weeks ago. And it just so happened that the, the managing director of that company um, is also a volunteer herself and does a lot of work in that space. And just having that experience with the London Irish Centre I think separated me out from, from, I guess, I think she said she had 600 applicants for the role. Um, and, and she really did mention the fact that, uh, you know, working with as a volunteer uh, makes me or makes a candidate stand out. Um, and, you know, in the interview process, so much of the time was, was spent on, on the work with, with the London Irish Centre. But even outside of that, my, my new position, I spent a lot of time on the phone speaking to people and, Thinking about that today, the work I've been doing with the London Irish Centre, calling people, having difficult conversations with people in the community who are really in, in dire situations has given me almost, you know, like a resilience to, to having difficult conversations on the phone. So um, that was a benefit that I, I really didn't expect. But, you know, in hindsight, I think, oh, yeah, I mean, that prepared me for the role I'm, I'm currently doing. But it also, you know, it, it, it just created momentum, I think, more than anything. Um, as soon as I, I reached out to Sinead, um, you know, things started moving. Again, hammering home the point, speaking to the bit of ex-community, being introduced to yourself, Peter, and, and Paul as well, leader in his industry. Um, all of these things have, have started moving. And, and I have to say it's, it's primarily down to having gotten involved in the volunteering with the London Irish Centre. Great. Well, uh, um, uh, looking forward, Brian, to catching up at the end of this with a couple of questions. Um, but um, Sinead, I think you name's been mentioned a lot and, and the organisation you, you work for. Um, probably best to sort of kick things off with a, a bit of background, you know, who you are, you know, what you do and, and, and who you work for. Hey everybody, great to see you all. Um, yeah, so I'm Sinead, I'm 31 and I'm the volunteer coordinator at the London Irish Centre. I'm also on the board of Beta X, so I've been involved for two years with Beta and I've always been very, very welcomed in this community. Um, and we've organised lots of educational events and networking and opportunities for young people. Um, I've been working for the Irish Centre uh, for well, since last year, um, but during the COVID-19 crisis, I uh, went from being an advice worker to a volunteer coordinator. Um, so it's been really exciting. There's been lots going on and um, very busy, as you can imagine, with everything happening. And I've, I've really, really enjoyed the, the challenge. And... Um, I enjoyed working with our clients, but equally working with a really, really lovely group of people from diverse backgrounds who are volunteering with us. People from the business community, actors, artists, teachers, social workers, you know, just being part of that and uh, working with such lovely people has been absolutely amazing. Um, and in, t in terms of my background, I've worked in charities for nine years now and always motivated by a good cause and things I deeply care about. And, um, you know, I've always found it very rewarding. And my volunteering that I did when I was younger uh, for an equal rights charity was what kick-started my career in charity. Um, so I would recommend, you know, if you do want to get in the charity sector, of course, volunteering is particularly, um, you know, highly thought of, of course. And um, so that's how it all started off for me. Okay. And I mean, just, I suppose, touch on the sort of work you're doing and to sort of help frame, you know, the, the sort of, um, 
you know, sort of help and work that the, the London Irish Centre does at the moment. Yeah. Uh, can you give us an idea of the sort of, um, you know, the sort of need and help, you know, that, that, um, that you deal with? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the need is everything from uh, food poverty, digital poverty, addiction, isolation, um, helping with moving to, 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 to London and moving back to Ireland. Um, we help people across the whole of, of London and, um, you know, it's, people come with us for us so many different things, but whether it's our advice service or if they're feeling uh, particularly isolated, they can have telephone befriending, which I oversee uh, three days a week. And so, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of services and, uh, and we try and respond the best we can to people. Right. And what are the different sort of ways that people can get involved in, uh, in, in volunteering at the moment? A whole array of things. So we appreciate people have got different skills and different backgrounds and, and different specialisms. So it's everything from telephone befriending, as I mentioned, uh, comms and marketing support, administration support, um, you know, contributing to, to really good governance as well. Um, we have like people performing. Um, you might have seen our fundraiser recently um, from musicians. Um, the list goes on and on. Everything from we have a person that looks after our, our gardening uh, while the, we're not in our building for us. And we've got volunteer drivers who, who drop off food parcels and hot bag for us and have the chat on the doorstep with, with our clients. And uh, that, that, that is so valuable for what we do. And obviously, if anything's happening, if they're feeling particularly low, we can link them in with our health advice line, for example, or advice team. And it's a great way of um, checking in on everyone that we, we've got contact with. Just to help get a, get a bit more detail, a bit of understanding of that. I mean, can you give us some, um, you know, sort of examples of, um, you know, help that people have, that people have had to, from your experience that you picked up on? Yes, absolutely. So it was only a few weeks ago, um, myself and a very famous volunteer, our patron, Dermot O'Leary, were doing food drops um, to different clients around London. And uh, when we went to visit one particular gentleman, um, what we found behind that door was a really isolated and fearful gentleman and uh, you know it was very difficult for him because he was a widower and um, and he hadn't seen his family in a long time and even though he really got on with his neighbours he felt uncom uncomfortable reaching out to them so you know from a two two meter distance and gloves and masks and whatnot we, we had lovely chats about his home county Mayo and all the legends that have come from Mayo and the successful people and um, and was seeing how he was doing, and uh, and, it, and it seemed to make a big difference. We had a photograph, we had a, a hug from afar, and uh, and just to give you a bit of context on that particular client, he um, he normally comes to our luncheons. He normally comes to the centre very often, and was quite struggling not to to do that. But he also has the telephone befriender Sean, who gives him a regular call, which which he really appreciates, and who's fantastic with him because he has dementia, and Sean's got a professional background that can help support him. Um, and also as an advice worker, I helped him with benefits because of his age and, and health and physical and mental health disability. So um, we hope that those visits and that human connection gave him a, a massive lift. And, uh, you know, we enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. And obviously we've sent him a picture of, of him and Dermot as well. So he's very happy. Great. OK, that's it. And I mean, from a from a charity, from the charity point of view, um, I mean, you know, the, the main benefits for you know, these volunteer services, you know, how, how, how important is that to charity? Absolutely massive. Like, ultimately, we can help more people with volunteer support, which is fantastic. And it creates community cohesion, kind of bringing people together, you know, extending our London networks, our Irish networks is really important. And uh, having a really broad range of experience and skills from diverse backgrounds creates new ideas and innovation. Um, and that affects us a whole like across the whole charity so it's it's really really valuable and ultimately it gives our, our staff such a, a lift knowing there's people that care and and that can then um, you know support us and what we're doing it, it does mean the world to us okay great uh, really, really really insightful to see you know to see it from the from the other side of view the sort of behind the scenes as it were you know very much close and and and, and around the good work that's that, that's being done um, Paul, throughout this whole process, you know, you've been a sort of keen uh, sort of advocate and very, spoke very passionately about, um, 
you know, volunteering uh, from, from maybe another sort of viewpoint. Um, to bring everyone up to speed, Paul, a bit, bit of background on sort of who, you, who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I, I'd like to say that at the top of my CV, it says volunteer now. So that's a, mm -hmm. that's a, good, a good ad. Um, so I, I have a management consultancy firm, which I started about three years ago. And prior to that, I've run lots of manufacturing and construction companies uh, all over the world. Um, the reason I think I, I have anything to add to what has been two fantastic um, observations already um, is the fact that I've employed and managed hundreds of people. So I, I hope I understand where volunteering can pay a part of that and, and also what it's, it's paid, uh, played in my life as well. So, okay. And um, how do you sort of see volunteering fitting in the, in, in, in the business world? Well, I, th I think, you know, I think we'd, we would all assume, that we all know that it's a huge part to play in, in the charity sector because there, there doesn't tend to be a lot of money flying around. So it doesn't tend to be typically used in, in business. Um, apparently, we have lots of money in business. And that's not always true. Um, my, 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 my take on this is that 20, 30 years ago, we were in businesses, we would we'd be employing people on, on their kind of CV only. So that would be a qualification and experience. Um, what, this, what this current climate, the virus has, has told us, in fact, it, this was going on before, is that um, businesses need to tap into who people are more than ever before and actually what they stand for. So when businesses are promoting themselves today compared to 20, 30 years ago, um, it's it's understanding on, on what this business stands for and therefore looking for the right kind of people that actually fit into that um, into that model. The, the skills that a volunteer has um, is almost like a, a superpower when it comes to what really good businesses now function on. And if you're as a, as a business owner and a, somebody who's run lots of businesses and employed people for the wrong reasons, I can tell you that it's it's really painful and hard work trying to remove people who are not team players, who do not care about their um, their fellow workers. It's all all about themselves. So, yeah, I think from a business point of view, um, I would encourage anybody who's involved in business and employing somebody that the the actual characteristics, the skills that are required. Well, Brian is articulating there, which there is no way I could do it half as good as he did is exactly the skills that most modern forward-thinking businesses are looking for. And, and maybe, Paul, you know, from your point of view, is there anything that sort of stands out as, you know, sort of, you know, core desirable characteristics in volunteers that, that, that are applicable in business? Yeah, well, there's, there's a long list, if I'm honest. Um, I think, you know, Brian was talking about some of the skills that he's, he's he already had, but they're now either being added to or... Um, he's being to feel confident to actually use the ones he already had. Um, I mean, it, there, there was a, a survey done by Gallup many years ago where it talked about the real reason that people came, became successful in business. And they talked about that, <clears throat> excuse me, that largely it was 85% down to interpersonal skills and 15% down to technical knowledge of, of your particular area. Now, please don't quote me exactly on those percentages, but, but what, it, what it demonstrates is that the way you've got people who actually know how to communi communicate, they know how to connect with another human being. These are things that uh, you know, organizations like um, the, the Irish Centre and many others are tapping into those skill sets that people have already got, um, but they are easily transferable to the business world. Um, and I, I said, my, my experience with volunteering started when I moved down to where I live now, just, just before I started my own company, I knew nobody. And I started volunteering, one, because I, I wanted to volunteer. What actually happened over the three years, my network is now vastly superior to what it would have been if I'd just done it in the normal way through the kind of normal business channels. So, so I think the, the skill sets um, of 
uh, empathy, compassion, um, ethical, all these kind of values that most businesses want to see on their websites today. I think, you know, if I were to, and I'm involved quite heavily with a recruitment firm, so I know that they are now asking the client more about who they want rather than what they do. Um, because they know from a long-term perspective, if you find the right person, put the right person on the bus initially, the chances are those people will still be with you in years to come. So, yeah, very, very important. Yeah, I think, I, I think we sort of touched on it, but, you know, that, that, that um, you know, volunteering, we've heard from Brian a little bit, but, you know, turning into a, you know, a career or, or, or business opportunity, I mean, it seems that, um, you know, that's that, you know, that, that could be, you know, there, there's, there's something to that, right? Yeah, well, in fact, well, I think it's, um, yet again, I can't, I can't say this is my quote, but um, apparently we get promoted by the people beneath us. If you've got a, a team of people in your business that are only looking after themselves, then rather than trying to look out for each other, then you're not actually going to have a very positive business and, and also not a very positive career set. So, so I think just, just to know that the people around you are, are the right kind of person that is going to be supporting you and helping you and you are then in turn doing it you know collectively everybody wins it, it's still it's still a, a concept that will get better I and mean, there are still businesses that don't take those things into account but i think the the volunteer and the charity sector could teach business world so much more about harnessing those skills um because when you put them into a team you know, I just hear the passion that's coming out of Brian and uh, Sinead and a number of the other people I've met. It's just extraordinary. And I, you know, it, I'm, I'm kind of gravitating to thinking, I actually want to work there. So, um, yeah, I think, I think these things are in, incredibly important in business now. And just to build on that, I, I've just started in, in, in the recruitment industry and it's, it's within engineering specifically. And... Look, I mean, within that space, people can either do the job or they can't. You either have the technical skill or not. Uh, what we're doing now is putting candidates forward and, and using short videos on their softer side, on the software skills that they have. It's, it's five pointed questions in a two minute space around, about them as a person, what are their hobbies, what do they do outside of work? Because the employer already knows they have the skills because they've seen their CV. So I think in the current environment, those skills are becoming more and more important, particularly as we're moving to even online to, and video to, to hire people. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, a, lot of, a lot of business people that I know would say that <clears throat> we, can, we can teach somebody the technical skills. What we struggle to teach them is the other things that they already have gifted to them naturally. Um, and what's, what a lot of people who, who gravitate to volunteer work they already have those. They already have that itch that they need to scratch. And if from a business environment, with, as my business grows, one of the absolute priorities that I will look for when I'm probably looking through CVs or video technology when I'm interviewing people will be, have they, have they volunteered? Because if they've got those qualities, that's already a foot in the door. Yeah. And Paul, what would you say to those, you know, that are maybe they're in full-time work at the moment, they're in a paid job or they're running a business and, you know, may, can, yeah. they may feel they, they don't want to, you know, that volunteering is not for them maybe, enough on them. Yeah, I, I, would, I might say that you go and find another employer, I think, but um, I think generally speaking now, businesses that are actually tuned into this are actually encouraging their workforce to do it. As I said, a lot of us actually have that itch that we need to scratch, but sometimes, for me, it was, it was much later in life, even later than Brian's. I didn't start volunteering till about five years ago. But if you've, if you've got, you can volunteer in your own time, obviously. But most businesses, most bosses, if you go to them and say, listen, I'd like to be able to give back to this particular charity or I'd like to help with this area and what have you, very, very few in my experience will ever say that is a bad thing. Um, and actually, you're just proving that you've got another skill set they may not even notice. So even if you're a current employer and you're listening to Brian talk, you now I know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I need to get his telephone number and um, you know, 
whip him away from the London Irish Centre. So, I mean, should I, I'll actually ask you the same question. I mean, you know, ha having working with you know a number of different people, I mean, do, do you find that there's an increasing amount of you know professional you know business owners that are you know that are giving their time and, and the sort of work they're giving to um, you know to, to the centre? Absolutely, like we have a great variety of people volunteering for us. Um, even our, our former CEO, who's actually in the conversation today, who's from a very diverse background, Sean, he's now working on our redevelopment project. Um, so even as a charity, we have a tradition of, of fantastic people from the business community supporting us, and whether that's on our fundraising groups or field and development, you know, uh, we've had some amazing people from like, television backgrounds that helped us in our fundraiser recently. I don't know if you saw that. We, uh, we, we kind of put that together in quite a short space of time because of the generous offer of amazing volunteers with actually quite exceptional skills. Um, and without them, you know, we couldn't have done it. So um, yeah, absolutely. A really, you know, really impressive uh, variety of people. But equally, we had over 300 new volunteer inquiries since the 18th of, of March, but more, way more than that. You know, I get, you know, there's, there's, there's fantastic people who are coming forward and, uh, you know, we're really blessed to, to be able to work with them. Okay. Well, so, you know, just, just picking up what Brian said about, um, you know, you touched on mental health. Um, obviously, the, the, the stresses of obviously what's been happening in our own homes, but in work as well, um, to be able to give your workforce and this is from a business perspective again, to be able to give your workforce an opportunity to go out and connect with other people that is away from home, that is away from work stresses, um, it, it's a, a tremendous outlet to be able to actually, you know, use the skills you've already got. So yeah, it, it said from a mental health perspective, and I work with a number of organizations on that area as well, um, I found that it's, it's rewarding to be helped it's reward incredibly rewarding to be the helper as well um it's it's not and if we if we t remove that from a business then we're we're not probably taking be mindful of people's mental health as well yeah and um paul and uh i had a question that's come through about you know people how people can start to choose where they um you know where their skill where they're needed where their skills are needed i mean um you mentioned that you know you've been involved in volunteering in a, in a number of ways I mean, what's your experience being like that trying to, to, to if you want to take the plunge but just decide where, where best to spend your time and where you can best be of use. yeah this is you know i i regret deeply that i didn't get involved in this early earlier uh, i always knew that i thought there was a part of me that wanted to do it but just never got around to doing it um as far as where i mean when you start looking it's staggering where there is so much need i mean you know i would start at the london irish center for a, if you're anywhere near london but um but even actually i know they and I'm, I'm speaking for them here is that you know being able to offer somebody calling somebody who is lonely you don't need to be in london you don't need to be irish for that so these these opportunities are everywhere um whatever area whatever town you live in just put volunteering into google and your town name and, and i'm not joking there will be a thousand organizations that will be crying out for people to help out and it could just be they need somebody to wash up it could be that you they need somebody to stand on a door at a function that they're running but they can't afford to to get some people in um i volunteered basically anything anybody asked me to do i did and out of the back of that came so many other opportunities not that I was going in it for that reason, but I think, yeah, the, I think once you start opening that box, you will find that there is an enormous amount of opportunity out there to volunteer. And I think just to, to build on that, even when I got started, I thought, you know, with telephone befriending, is that actually, you know, making an impact? Is there going to be much benefit to, to anyone from that, just giving a phone call? I mean, working with Sinead and the team, there's so many people that you're not aware of wasn't aware of certainly in the community who you know getting a call once a day having you know talking even talking about nothing talking you know what's on the news is their only form of conversation and it, it, it can have a huge impact on their side when I originally thought you know you know is it worth the phone befriending what, what impact is it going to have so I think even 
tiny gestures 10 minutes out of the day can have a, a huge impact on someone's life because there are a lot of people i think in in this society who who are quite isolated yeah yeah i actually I have one little personal story you just made me think of uh, brian is that uh, i was talking to a, a gentleman on the phone just it was a weekly call and um it actually turned into a situation where I was getting way more benefit out of it than he was. And we're now actually start talking about him starting a little business. Oh, yeah. We first started talking, he, he actually wasn't even employed. And his, his yeah. aspirations were, all I need is a job. And now we're talking about, actually he could even start his own company. So that was never planned. Um, yeah. It really wasn't, it wasn't part of my, remit to have that conversation with him it just flowed that way and so as the as the relationship built we found that there were certain things we had in common and i knew people that i could introduce him to so yeah it's it's a it's a wonderful you know, watching where, where these things go uh, yeah, another small benefit on that is from the I'm having, the impact is having on my social life i think we have about three sessions planned up in kilburn once the pubs open so you know, there's, there's the hidden benefits to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Sinead, you obviously you were kind enough to put us in contact with Brian and it was really great to hear his story. I mean, does, does it, it doesn't feel to me that this is an, an, an outlier. It's unusual for, for someone to see, you know, this, 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 this benefit, um, you know, from your, from your, from your point of view, um, you, do you get that similar feedback from other volunteers about these these, these extra these hidden benefits that people are people are seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's such a variety of ways, like whether it's improving your confidence or whether it's feeling like you're valuable, like you're actually making a contribution in the crisis, it is massive for people. You want to be useful ultimately, and you want to be busy. Um, and actually, you know, knowing that your support is going to a good cause and to some to really help people that really need it, I think provides a lot of meaning for people and it you know, helps them get up in the morning and, uh, and keep carrying on ultimately. And I can't wait to kind of get all of our volunteers together when it's safe to do so and just just introduce them to each other because it's such a they're such nice people. Um, and, you know, it's it's a great community to be part of. So. I think people don't necessarily know what to expect, but we've been really lucky to get some great feedback. And I think particularly for people that have um, emigrated or have moved to London, um, who are feeling particularly isolated, never mind with everything going on at the moment, um, you know, that human connection, that conversation, the volunteers are saying, I can't believe how much of a difference it's made to me. And obviously everyone to their own, but it's been lovely to hear that it's given people a lift. So they felt they benefited from it as well and weren't even expecting to get anything from it. Yeah. And we've, uh, this has come up multiple times, Sinead, when we've been speaking about, uh, you know, about Bitter X and what we've, what we've been trying to do, um, you know, about really trying to create, um, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a workflow around, you know, young professionals that are looking to, uh, you know, to spend their time and, and, and help out and, you know, all the great benefits that we've, we've touched on today. Um, you know, is, is there somewhere they could, you know, how, how can they start that journey if they felt that the London Irish Centre was the, was the first place to, uh, to check in with? Sure, so they can obviously reach out to myself. Um, my details on the London Irish Centre to website. Um, we have sort of application form that they can fill out. Um, and then we, when they've, build that out then we can let them know about opportunities kind of coming up in the in the future I know we've been so um lucky to have received so many people coming forward and looking to support us but there will be more and more opportunities in the future and and things change you know we've recruited some more drivers recently from our cohort of people looking to to support us so I would definitely say just just reach out to us um, and like I said when the opportunities arise we, we will certainly let you know I can just Add a little bit to that as well. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed hearing all, all the speakers, and of course, I work with with Sinead, and I've had some contact with with Brian as well. And, and uh, very interesting to hear uh, uh, Paul your experience too. Um, I, so I, I work at the London Irish Centre as the Community Services Director. Um, so I'm kind of responsible at a, a strategic level to looking at how volunteering works. And um, so I mean, ju just a couple of points that I thought I'd add. Uh, kind of related to some of the discussion and, and in terms of like the benefits of, of volunteering. So we do know from research that um, people who volunteer um, 
very often benefit actually more than the people who they are helping. Um, and you know, some of those, those things have been pointed out. I mean, the skills, the, the confidence, the well-being, the, the connection with others, a kind of sense of uh, meaning, being engaged in meaningful activity. And of course, as a, as a charity, we are run by a board of, of volunteers and, and uh, people who are unpaid. And we are, um, uh, particularly now during the, the, the kind of pandemic, we've um, really started to uh, embrace the, the kind of power of, of volunteering and uh, we've had a big expansion of our uh, volunteering program. Um, we have, uh, a, a, as Sinead said, about 300 people on the books. We, 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 if you do get in touch now, you will be given a kind of holding message that we're, uh, that we're not kind of processing any new uh, uh, volunteer inquiries at the present. So, um, so just to, to kind of forewarn you about that, that it, you know, in a few months' time, we, we will uh, hopefully be in a better position to kind of uh, offer people opportunities. But we, we have uh, received funding recently from the Irish government to, um, uh, to look at our, our volunteering programme. And, and we have a, a volunteer consultant who's going to um, um, help us devise a, a strategy and to, to kind of get volunteering um, to, kind of, to kind of become more of a volunteer-led organisation, which is our our uh, aim. But um, uh, yeah, you know, we certainly really appreciate the, uh, all of the help that you know, that Brian does and, and that our, the, the volunteers do, and and uh, and thanks to the, the support of uh, Bitta uh, as well, and, and and for you know kind of this opportunity. Um, thank you. Great. It's great to uh, it's great to get some. Today. You know, we set out trying to hear it from the volunteers, the organisation's point of view, and, and you know, maybe a slightly more professional, uh, professional scope. And I think you know, we've really, um, you know, hopefully started to um, give that bit of insight. And you know, if, if this causes people to, um, you know, just a couple of people to take a bit of action the forward, then I think you know, it's been a really worthwhile uh, time today. Um, so I think that that's all we've uh, sort of need to sort of cover off today. Um, we are continuing to to run these webinars uh, every couple of weeks. Um, the best way of staying keeping up to date uh, with uh, BitterX is on our LinkedIn page. We're uh, regularly putting the recording of these webinar as well as uh, open very much for sort of future ideas and and, and opportunities uh, across the young network. Um, I'd like to thank our our, our speakers, um, Sinead and, and Brian and Paul. Uh, thank you for your for your time today and your insight. I think it's been really good, and I think you know we've really given a good example of uh, uh, those those benefits of, uh, of volunteering that we've come out to do. Um, and uh, and Brian, thanks for sort of giving giving your uh, Brian Hanley for trying to give your thoughts on um, uh, you know from from an organisational level um, the sort of uh, the sort of benefits there. So thanks for everyone for uh, for tuning in, and I uh, hope to see uh, many more faces in our in our next session in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.